What, what is this meat? Bog wing. Oh my God. Did He's you, gonna uh, eat a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember George saying, you know, just go totally Dr. Seuss on this. Okay, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Welcome everyone to our very first episode of Millennial Falcon. Yay! Yay! My name's Jenny. I'm the Millennial Falcon. It's my name and it's also the name of the show because I'm the host. <laughs> and this is my guest, Eric Goldman. He's the executive editor at IGN. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here for your first episode. Yep. And you're not even a millennial. Nora Falcon. That's true. And now we're going to move right along to our discussion topic. It's time for banter fodder. Yeah. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about Star Wars cuisine, more specifically being a carnivore in the world of Star Wars. Mm. Do you eat meat? I do eat meat. Okay. Have you ever thought about how that would work if you lived in Star Wars? Only really about the fact that the Ewoks eat humans. And I wonder, like, they were what? so ready to eat human. I wonder, yeah. had they done it before? I mean, yeah, you're probably right. Like, they remembered it being their favorite delicacy. <laughs> right, right. Would you eat an Ewok? I don't know, you know, it's like, they're pretty cute, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Mostly I think I'd try to avoid, I think it'd be like the same thing I do in real life, right? Oh, you've got a lot of personality, I don't think I could eat you. What if they had a personality but it was like a rude one? Oh, then I could eat them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never found them that cute. I think they're a little scary. I would probably just go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about a out. Salacious Crumb? What is he called? A Kowakian monkey? Salacious Crumb, yeah. I, I was wondering about Salacious Crumb, not the species, but the individual. <laughs> right. Would you eat him personally? And he's super annoying, but yeah. I, I mean, endearingly so, but yeah. yeah I, I think I think if, if I was starving, I could eat if Salacious Crumb. If you're really crumb. hungry, what, yeah. if, what if his family was watching? <laughs> That would make it a little harsh. Like his wife and kids, you can tell it's his family because it's like it looks like him, but she has little hair rollers. And <laughs> there's a kid with like, I love my daddy. He's got the shirt. Well, if I'm starving, maybe I'll just take an arm. On that note. <laughs> Would you eat a Ronto? Would I eat a Ronto? Yeah, yeah you know, uh, I, I think I'd eat a Ronto. You know, they look uh -huh. like they, they got, you know, they got some uh, some some good meat there. Yeah. Um, you're basically eating a horse, so you have to feel bad about that. That's true. That's but, true. But um, I mean, at least they're not like human level of intelligence. No, no. Like, for example, what if it was like a Twi'lek? No, 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 I can't do that. I can't, can't do that. I mean, I guess if you're in like a situation like you're starving to death, like out in like the cold. Like donor parties. Yeah, like you'd be like, what if one tentacle? Like, yeah, I was going to say, because we don't know what they use those for. Yeah. You could just cut off that meaty bit. That's right. The proper Star Wars word is not tentacle, and someone's going to in the comments, going to be like, you don't even yeah. know. And I can't remember. It starts with an L, maybe. But yes, I think that's... Yes, I, no, you're right. It does start with an L. Hmm. It's going to bother me. It's going to bother us. If only us. we had someone that could like look up stuff for us, but that's <laughs> right. not how we roll here. That's We're not, not on those fancy shows. We, so. don't have, we don't have phones just, we can look at We'll wonder forever that's right. until someone leaves it in the comments. <laughs> um, but what about, like, let's see, a Wookiee? No, come on. You can't eat a Wookiee. No? Yeah, come on. That's like... That's his like right. That's Han's like right hand man. His well, I didn't buddy. say Chewbacca. I know. You can eat a but... Wookiee that you didn't know and love. <laughs> no, I just I like just... his family or something. No, like like they fly spaceships, you know. So it's like they're you yeah. know. I just, just feel I like. I mean, but cows can do that. <laughs> can cows fly spaceships? Yeah. Oh man, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So what if it was like uh, something like a Jawa, where you don't even really know what's under the cape? That's true, right? I mean, it could be something really creepy. But what but... if, like, they took the hood off and you realized it? They just looked like an already cooked corn dog, like crisped to perfection. Wow! Like, and it, it has the glowing eyes. All right, all right. I mean, I if, mean, if we're talking yeah. like a Disneyland corn dog, like mm -hmm. you can get it's them... that level. Uh, all like right, it's the... golden brown. I might switch. I might like mm -hmm. just give in right then. Yeah. yeah. And would you consider um, something else that's vaguely humanoid, like a nemoidian? No, I mean, I think, you know, again, they're walking around, they're making deals with Palpatine. Okay, is it the bipedal thing that's It's the bipedal out? thing, right? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. But, like, I feel like with those, they're they're evil enough and, like, stupid enough, I would just eat them out of spite. Right, like, right. Like, I wouldn't even enjoy it. It probably wouldn't taste good. I'd be like, oh, no. But, like, it would be like, I hate them so much. I'd be like, yeah, it shows you. Right. I, I wouldn't do it myself, but I understand where you're coming from. Okay, you wouldn't do it, though. I don't think so. So do you think the Mon Calamari would be the most delicious beast? Because, uh, like, a lot of people theorize that it would be, like, a lobster dinner. Mm, but mm. I'm wondering, what part would you even be eating? 
you go, you go with the flipper. Like they go with those mm. big sort of flipper hands, you know. Oh, that's so weird. Yeah, you eat an animal's hands. So you was, well, no. Like, or or yeah. what if it's like a noble tradition in the Mon Calamari? Like you know, it's I not, happily give a. Uh, uh, all it's right, really not. I, I can't lie to myself about that. No, it's definitely not. All right, they they have a little thing like a card that comes with your meal that clarifies that it's not traditional. <laughs> this was taken by force. Like this is very abnormal but not to the serve force? you a Mon Calamari. Right, hand. right. It's printed on the menu underneath, mm. and then it also says comes with a side salad. I guess I'd have to be you know. I just have to uh, ignore all the morality on that one. You would. So yeah. you would go for it. I mean, I, 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 try, I try a little nibble. I, I couldn't eat a Mon Calamari. <laughs> yeah. They're such good admirals. It's kind of like uh, Toy Darians. I yeah. think they're a little adorable, so I don't I don't think I could eat those. They were little hats. Yeah. But maybe Watto. Well, he just seems dirty. Yeah. I don't know if I... He, it's like, did anyone wash him first? Well, it definitely seemed like by Attack of the Clones, he had like flies buzzing around him. And yeah, he's, mm -hmm. he's in a bad place. But maybe that's just him personally. Yeah. The, rest, the rest are very clean. Yeah. Would you um, would you eat a stormtrooper? <laughs> well, now we're just getting into Ewok meals, right? Because we all assume that they ate those stormtroopers yeah. or playing their helmets at the Ewok end. Ewok cuisine. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, but that's straight up, you know, straight up humans. I think I'd have to pass on that one. Well, unless they're not we're... really humans; they're clones, so it doesn't count. Well, but the clone troopers, stormtroopers that were recruited, so I don't know. Since I... they don't have real human rights, I think it's okay to eat them. <laughs> But that's that's just you know that's just feeding into what how Pal Palpatine would treat them. Feeding, I see ah, what you did there. See? Yeah, that's mm. good. So it looks like we've reached a general consensus about what's okay to eat and what's morally not okay to eat. For the most part. So at this time, why don't we pass it over to our expert? We actually have a creature designer in house, so it's time for a Jedi consultation. <laughs> Skyping in, we have Tara Whitlash. She is a creature designer at Lucas Films, and thanks for coming in today or Skyping oh, you're, in. You're so welcome. <laughs> so, first of all, I'd love to hear a little bit about your background. Like, do you have a favorite creature in the Star Wars universe? I think my favorite one is probably the Aqua Sando monster. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, uh, it's the largest I, creature I think that I've ever designed. Mm -hmm. It's at the top of the food chain. That's true. <laughs> this one eats anything it wants to. <laughs> I, I live my life the same way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what creatures are you responsible for? Do you have like a list or is it like too many that you can't like remember them? Well, there is a great deal of them, especially if you're talking about the prequels. I would say all the pod racers, just about, you know, Jar Jar and... Mm -hmm. The anti Jar Jar Sebulba, um, <laughs> all the stampede scene creatures. Wow. Uh, pretty much the whole zoo, most of the zoo, yeah. That's crazy. Was there a particular one that gave you any trouble? Like you knew what you wanted from it, but it was hard to make it make sense? It was more how long did the design process take before it, it met you know, George's approval? Mm -hmm. um, Jar Jar Banks himself took a year and a half. Wow. wow. Sebulba. So took an afternoon, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> he's so weird, though, the way he's put together, like his limbs, the way his joints bend and everything. I feel like that would take longer. You know, when you think about him, he's just basically an animal that mm -hmm. walks on his hands and drives with his feet. So I was thinking of <laughs> you know, certain acrobats and such. <laughs> So when you were inventing these, did you kind of envision, you, you mentioned your water creature was the top of the food chain. Did you ever envision other ones, like whether they would eat or be eaten and what they might be eaten by? Yes, actually, uh, with um, Star Wars, that particular franchise is, I think part of the appeal is that we can picture ourselves in that world because it's basically planet Earth just tweaked a little bit, just add a little bit of Dr. Seussiness and Flash Gordon and Bonanza <laughs> added into that. And you've got basically, you have Star Wars. And so all of the creatures have a natural history behind them. Um, yes, we know what creatures eat what other creatures, just like you would on you know planet Earth. And that's why it really all makes sense on a subconscious level for the audience. Are there any that would be eaten by humans? Any very uh, outlandish ones? I think anything is potentially edible by <laughs> human beings. Um, it depends upon what level of kosherness you subscribe to, <laughs> or you know how valuable are those particular creatures to other races. For example, you probably, if you're human, you probably would not want to eat a bantha because they're sacred to the sand people, and the sand people would probably get you for that. <laughs> uh -huh. So, like, it might be delicious, but you might have to pay for it later. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's your way. Things usually do work out in that universe. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Are there any that you would be brave enough where you're like, yeah, I would eat that one if I had to? Hmm. Well, the problem with that is that as their designer, I'm kind of like fond of all of them. I don't want to kind of like eat my, my, my pets. They're so like your speak. babies. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is a little hard. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a little hard. <laughs> well, thank you for telling us about all the different qualities of the creatures. I was wondering if you had any, like, crazy anecdotes, like anything that was rejected for an outlandish reason, or maybe one creature that started out one way and turned out completely different before it was done. Working on that film, it was so fast-paced, even though it was unusual that we worked on it longer than is normal for any feature, because George, basically the buck stopped with George, and he was, you know, funding the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Most of the designs, I would say, except for Jar Jar, pretty much stayed more or less in their original conception. But as I said, Jar Jar himself, aside from being tall and relatively gangly, looked like many different animals any one time. So I'd say that that character was the one that probably changed the most of the ones I worked on. That's so intimidating, too, because he was on screen so much. Right. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like their pressure's really on for him in particular. I would say that's probably one of the reasons that he did take so long, because he was probably the first digital character, at least his historically, that had to command a whole lot of screen time. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of care was taken with, with his design and such. So you said that for like the pod race, you designed pretty much all of them. Was that like they came to you and said, we need eight creatures, and you just had to think of like eight all at once, or was it like they came to you one at a time, like we need a creature that does this and a creature that does that? I didn't have to draw them all at once, like one day. I, I had a number of weeks yeah. to figure them out. The good thing about Star Wars is that you can, you that is an alien, can come from anywhere, and so you can look like anything. Mm -hmm. And I remember George saying, you know, just go totally Dr. Seuss on this. So, okay, that sounds like fun, so I did. Which I think made it a lot of fun for my colleague, Ian, to design the costumes for them. <laughs> so you would go to him with like the unclothed creatures and then he uh -huh. would try to figure out how they could dress them? Absolutely, because costuming is a whole art in itself, but costuming, animation costuming requires its own separate software and uh, its own separate build. So the creatures are always designed separately from the costuming. So we were talking about Ewoks earlier and we were kind of speculating on this on this chain of which creatures we would eat and be eaten. Um, Ewoks yes. eat humans, right? We saw them attempting it once, but we weren't sure if they actually do that on the regular. <laughs> you know, I would guess they probably don't do it that regular because how often do humans, you know, visit, unless you're referring to the Ewok adventure movie, but right. in the, yeah, in the world true. of Star Wars, let's just, just take Star Wars galaxy, yeah. how often do human beings land on their planet? And it's from when we first meet them, it's like they're just as curious about the human characters as the human characters are about them. So mm -hmm. probably they wouldn't be, logically speaking, so no. you would not eat an Ewok? Well, they're just too sentient for, for me to do that. They'll be like, you know, eating, you know, a person I could potentially talk to. I don't think yeah, I could do Yeah, or, or like an intelligent dog, at least. <laughs> exactly. They're very <laughs> huggable. That level. Yeah, they're very cuddly creatures. Yeah. So it'd be a they little are. bit creepy. Well, Terrell, thank you so much for phoning in with us today. Well, it was my delight and my pleasure. Thanks so much. Well, that was awesome. Thank you, Terrell. And now all this talk about food and adorable creatures has made me a little bit hungry. How about you? I'm pretty hungry myself, yeah. All right, so now I think it's time to jump on out to our cooking portion. Mm. It's time for salacious crumbs. We're here with Chef Matt Dillon. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your culinary experience? Oh, I've been a certified executive chef since 1988. I own restaurants in Colorado, Nevada, and California. I have a new project going on in Santa Ana, California which is a combination of an eatery and a chef's club. 43,000 square feet of all Italian market, deli, pizzeria, coffee. So just think a, a giant food court with all Italian food flown in twice a week from Italy. Wow. Sold. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. What are you cooking? Well, we're gonna, the first dish we're doing for you is uh, Dagobah stew. 
Okay, that could have really anything in it, like like Yoda, maybe. <laughs> You'll love this. Um, what can you tell me about this stew? Well, we've got Dagobah stew. It looks we've, vegetarian. We've cooked it? it down. Uh, it's pretty much except for we need our bog wing that's coming. Oh. Okay. Uh, Thank mm. you. That's oh. got a scary oh face my on god. it. Oh my god. So we got our bog wing. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna use part of the the meat from all over. <laughs> That it's leg? <laughs> yes, this is a back. Okay, oh, you're just gonna drop of parts. Huh? <laughs> parts is parts, man. There's stuff coming out all over the, um, the whole thing. Oh, uh, there we go. There's Here. a lot going on there. <laughs> and pull some meat. So, um, um, what can you tell us about bog wings? How was this one um, caught? I don't know. I had my assistant get it for me, so okay. I, I can't. Now, uh, these are native to Dagobah? Yeah, I think they, they took it down with a blaster, is what I'm thinking. Oh, that would make sense, because its uh, head is gone. Mm. Yeah. Yum! Mmm, mm, just like Mom used to make. <laughs> so now we're taking some tail. Yes, we're going to um, pull some of the tail meat. They might use this to uh, land on tree branches and balance as they're flitting around through the swamps. Have you eaten bog wing before? I have, actually. Have you cooked it? Oh my god, that's a good sound. You like that? Uh, it's like all bone. It just sounds like a lot of bones. Cartilage and bone, yeah. Oh, cartilage. Uh, each each little area is going to have a different texture and flavor to it. Oh, good. I'm a texture uh, person, so I'm very excited. <laughs> wow. It's just so, so slimy. <laughs> well, do me a favor, hold that, lift that up for me. Okay. Let's get some more. I got hotter heat that's over here. Right. Let's take a look at her. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm in good shape here. So can uh, bog wings Ooh. feel pain? <laughs> oh yeah, they're a living creature. Why wouldn't they? Okay, the fear, <laughs> like the emotion, fear. Hopefully, maybe Yoda helps them feel like mellow with the force. You like know? Yoda caught it himself, and, <laughs> yes. like, and then he like snapped its neck. Yeah, He's yeah. like, yeah. and then he started his loop in that hut. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the Jedi way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What would you speculate is the most delicious Star Wars creature? I'm thinking Tauntaun ribs. Would you eat Java? Uh, yeah. Why not? Okay. I eat snails. I eat frogs. You think he's similar to a snail? A slug? Yeah, yeah. he looks like a giant slug to me. I guess. I feel like there's more to him. Like emotionally. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more. <laughs> there's a lot more to him emotionally. Yeah. Physically. He's a complex guy. He's got a lot going on. He eats frogs too, so. Yeah, he eats frogs yeah. live and raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think he would eat a bog wing? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything he turns down. There's, you don't get that big <laughs> by turning food down. By being selective. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So other than the bog wing, what is inside the stew? Uh, the stew itself is basically uh, vegan. So you've got, oh. you've got carrots, potatoes, mm -hmm. Uh, an assortment of wild mushrooms, split peas, veg stock. That sounds good. Uh, onions, garlic. That's it, and a lot of love. And oh, that's that's the best <laughs> ingredient. <laughs> and so. now you're gonna dump in some bog wings. That's yep. that vegan there part of it. Yeah. Now it's no longer vegan. So it's going in. It smells good. I, you're drooling over there, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. We got it. Let that slow simmer for 20, 30 minutes. And we got a magic oven down here. Oh, what? I love our magic oven. Back from the magic oven. Mm -hmm. Good. The beauty of television. Mm. <laughs> Let's do. There we go. Are you excited, Eric? I'm very excited, but obviously ladies first. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I'm a gentleman, you How know. How kind. Yeah. There yeah. you go. You want extras, right? I know I know how you are. I smell the mom bog <laughs> Thank you. Mm, yum. Did you like it? Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the stew. I have some questions about the meat. What is this? Huh? What, what is this meat? Oh, so bog wing we couldn't get, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we ended up getting iguana. The whole dead iguana. Yes. <laughs> I thought a, that might be what This is a was. land land lizard, and that's a flying lizard. So we Similar. figured that'd be the closest thing we could get. I that's <laughs> that's so good. I'm thinking about my sister's pet iguana. It that, is a big iguana. I had one actually <laughs> when uh, I was living in Colorado. He was uh, four foot. Is this him? Uh, no. <laughs> did I'm you? Just gonna uh, eat a carrot. Yeah. I was gonna say, did you enjoy some of that? <laughs> 
So um, I believe you've prepared another thing. Yeah, we have actually do back burgers. Okay. Well, hopefully you, you'll enjoy it. I love it. a good do back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's you know you go to Whole Foods, you pick up your do back and. Does Whole Foods carry it? Nosh on I usually it. go Trader Joe's. Yeah, they've got yeah. tauntaun ribs and all yeah. that too. Mm. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start, we're just gonna take our buns, I slathered them with uh, yes. some Irish butter. Which, which creature is that butter from? <laughs> oh, some Irish uh, Star Wars figure, I, I thought it would be Rancor. blue if it was Bantha. Ooh, but Bantha. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's Rancor butter. Yeah. Bantha butter. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got Dubak burger. We've seasoned, formed by hand. There's no binder in it or anything. So basically we would call this a smash burger. Is that style. how you killed the Dubak as well, <laughs> via smashing? I did not. Someone got it with their lightsaber and took it down I for me. I thought maybe oh, okay. same person with a gaffy stick got him. Now what are the virtues of Dubak meat versus other meats? Uh, it's much healthier. So it's a cross in between, say, lamb and uh, a beef or something in that in that flavor mm -hmm. profile wise. Okay. Um, it's leaner. It's healthier. Nice. We just let the meat kind of do its thing. We give it a quick flip. Mm -hmm. Cracked pepper, cheese. Okay. You like lettuce? Yes. Tomato. Everything. Everything. Huh? Everything. <laughs> you'd say no to. Eyeballs. Okay. Eyeballs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No thanks. So we've got this bad boy. We're ready, medium rare. You guys ready to take a bite and try? I'm ready. Are All you right. ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Okay, so there's one. Okay. There you Sounds go. good. Okay. Go at it. Let's see what you think. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right, go. That's a very good dewback. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you cooked dewback before? Because we're on Earth, we don't have any dewbacks. So we actually went to the Middle East and we got you some camel. Camel. Yeah, camel. so you're eating camel burgers. It, it's kind of like we talked about Rontos, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I never pictured myself eating a camel. Thanks. <laughs> I'll have some more camel. All right, okay. cool. He's going for it. I'm very aware right now. The flavor? Or is it psychosomatic? Maybe? No, it tastes good, but oh, okay. I just know it's a camel now. <laughs> Thank you so much for preparing these. Um, creatures. Well, thank you for inviting um, me. I hope you, you enjoyed everything. I know it's not the norm meat, no, but it was, it was, it was very well prepared. Well prepared. Yeah. Well thank prepared. you very much. Thank you for eating this stuff with me and discussing with me. No problem. No thank problem. Thank you for cooking this and not committing to eating it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I would eat it on camera. <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to plug before you go? Uh, I'll also be a Star Wars celebration. Uh, so look for uh, IGN.com, uh, our coverage from there. And I'm sure we'll be running into you guys around uh, looking at all the Star Wars stuff. <laughs> we'd, we'd love to have you come down and dine with us or any of the guests listening out on air or watching uh, mm -hmm. down to Osteria Vicorio in downtown Santa Ana for the best and only organocentric Italian restaurant in the United States. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you. You may now go. All right. Off to our lamp speeder. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Food. And now it's time to hear from you guys. We want to hear your feedback and your comments. So now I'm going to read a select few in what we call the airing of general grievances. So we're going to hear from our delightful comment section. What nice things have people said to me today? Elephantricity writes in saying, do you act all cute and awkward on purpose? Like, is it an act? Your spiel. And that has five likes. So, um, I guess the answer is yes. I'm actually really cool and uh, socially composed. And I intentionally act very awkward in my videos because it's charming. Um, but I'm actually much cooler than I seem. So, there you go. The more you know. And we have one more comment. This is from Ashton Wattpad. And he says, you are extremely depressing. So um, thank you, Ashton. I appreciate that. Um, I, I hope you're not too depressed, because I kind of am now. So I guess that'll wrap it up. Um, please leave your comments in the comments so that I can respond to them next time. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Click these boxes to watch more Screen Junkies news and click the logo to subscribe. <laughs>